My name is Pete, and welcome to my garage. Okay, so first thing I need to do is I need to strip the harness and the intake off because I'm going to sell off this intake because I don't need it. So start unplugging. I don't want to break any of the connectors so I need to be very careful. The pocket screwdriver helps a lot on these connections. To remove the injector connectors, you push on this little wire while you push down on the connector. That'll unseat it. Should be able to unplug it. Unplug the knock sensors. The map sensor, camshaft position sensor. I am going to have to undo the, the grounds on the cylinder heads. I'll get those in a minute. Finish unplugging these injectors. ground wires are off. This harness is pretty much taken off at this point. Okay, boy that really cleans everything up doesn't it? Alright, here's my PCV hose. That one, I'm just gonna, gonna ditch that for now. I'll throw it in the pile. At this point, the intake should come right off. All right, cylinder heads time. I've got to pull the valve covers first, but I also have the accessory drive that I got to take off because it bolts to this driver's side cylinder head. So um, I'm going to get rid of the water pump and the balancer for the project. So I got to take those off also. So it looks like we're pulling the belt off, which got my 15 millimeter wrench here. Take the tension off the belt. You save that belt. So I'm going to pop this uh, power steering pump off. You got to love electric impacts. There we go. That gives me room. I'm just going to keep all this together. So I won't have to find it later. So I'll know where it is. Save that for a later date. Save that. I'm going to save my idler pulley. Clean these valve covers up. 
All right, I like to uh, uh, bust these loose by hand before I start hitting them with an impact because they do like to round off. Yeah, look how clean that looks inside. That's what we like to see. No sludge. That's what you get when you actually change your oil. Good clean engine inside. Alright, got two 43 heads on here. I'm switching those out for some uh, rectangle ports. I had Texas Speed uh, and Performance uh, push rods here, chromoly push rods. All right, time to pop off the cylinder heads. It's another one of those things I like to break loose by hand before actually taking them loose. And if you turn the engine sideways, then you can use the weight of the engine as leverage so you're not trying to twist the engine around on the engine stand. But we might get a mess a little bit more head on the side. Now on the BMW swap, I put the G or the, this is the uh, passenger side head, and this is actually the uh, temperature sensor for the BMW temperature gauge on the dash. I just hope the dash uses the same resistance numbers as this one, but I don't know why BMW would have changed that between the years. But who knows? They may have. I don't know. We'll find out. All right, LS6 heads, ready to go to someone else who wants to buy them. Yeah, except I gotta take the valve springs off. I wanna use these valve springs on my other heads. All I got left is my balancer to try to get off. I got to take the motor mounts off and mark them. Oh, the oil pan. I should be good to go. Why? Why? Because I got to sell that stuff off. So we can put the motor in there with the big surprise. So it can be fast? Exactly. So we're going to make it fast, even faster than it was before. And was it fast before? Yeah, it was. That is called coolant.
so for this build I am going to use a set of LS3 cylinder heads um, you can see here we got the uh, rectangle port and that's going to go very nice with the supercharger that we're putting on the LSA blower um, I had some 240, uh, 243 cathedral port heads on it before uh, but these things have humongous intake valves I believe they're 2.125 so two and an eighth of an inch intake valves uh, I believe 160 exhaust valves or 159 exhaust valves I can't remember off the top of my head but these things have some humongous intake yes. valves on wow. the stock cylinder heads for an LS3 they actually come with the old school uh, LS6 style valve springs now these valve springs they're only good for, I believe it was 550 lift. The cam I have is 588. It's an older Texas Speed 228R cam, and I probably should change it out for, uh, for a rectangle port uh, head camshaft to uh, maximize the power and a blower cam. But I'm going to run with what I got and see what, exactly what it's like, and, uh, and we'll go from there. If we need to make more power, we can always change out the camshaft later and throw some uh, dual valve springs. Speaking of those valve springs, I have a set of, uh, these are PAC1218, I believe, uh, valve springs. They're good for 600 lift. So the cam I have is 588, uh, so I'm underneath that, and... Uh, we're adding a little boost to it, so it should it should still be good. I don't think I need to go dual dual valve springs yet, uh, not unless I change out the cam later on down the line. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these valve springs, swap them out with these, so these heads will be ready to go, and then I'll have to clean them up and get them on the engine. So just another part of the process. All right, in order to change out these valve springs, I use a tool like this. It looks like a giant C clamp, but it's actually a valve spring compressor. This part right here goes on the actual valve face right there, and then this part pushes on the retainer like that, and that will then compress the spring so we can get the keepers off, and the keepers look like this. Then we'll use a little trans gel uh, on a screwdriver to get them on there, and then we'll be good. You can see that they already have one off, so I'll go ahead and take another one off, and you can see. So right here we're lining up in the middle of the valve. So you can see, then we can use a magnet, we can grab the keepers with the magnet. Let me just release this. Bam. Rolled valve spring and retainer. And we can take our new valve spring and retainer, making sure that the retainer is in the correct spot, correct orientation. Stick it on there. Once it's compressed, I like to take trans gel like this and just a little bit on the screwdriver, a little bit on the keeper. We'll hold it in place so you're not fighting it the whole time. Just a little bit like that. Here's your hot tip for the day. So it'll stay there. Then as you release them, make sure you don't catch it on the retainers. Like I just did there and screw it totally up. We can see that that retainer is in there all the way. It's in there nice and good. Now to verify that we have this thing in there and that those aren't going to pop out, you can take a little soft face hammer like this and you can give it 
couple hits. And if that's not in there right, they're probably going to go flying. So that's kind of a way to check it to make sure you're good. This would be a good time to replace your valve seals if you're going to do that. But this one's a low mileage head. Now I've just got to do all the rest of them. These are beehive valve springs, so they're kind of a progressive rate spring. And you can see that at the very top, smaller diameter than the bottom. So this goes, make sure you go, that goes down. And then this is smaller so the retainer can fit on it right there. All right, one head down, one more to go.